So I guess I just thought about this, but you know, since we're here, I'll just kind of make it short. I don't think that enough people um, understand what anger looks like. Anger, I feel like anger and sadness are two feelings that, I mean, all the feelings on the feelings wheel are normal. Like you're gonna feel all of them in your lifetime. The more comfortable you are with understanding what those feelings are and where they stem from, the more I feel like you'll be able to like deal with them and just kind of acknowledge that like all feelings are fleeting. So there's no point where something is gonna happen to you. And then like all the hours of your life for the rest of your life, like you're only gonna feel that one feeling. Like that's not the case, but sometimes when you're young, it can feel that way, but that's not true. Um, and in terms of anger, um, one thing that I've seen are some people, I don't, I don't mean to racialize everything, but I'm just saying I've seen it. Um, I feel like some people in the white community are now with what, what's happening in Ukraine, they have this anger, like, um, there was a video that Candace Owens made where she was like basically saying she couldn't take the president of Ukraine seriously because he was giving a speech at the Grammys on a teleprompter, um, you know, with the transcript. And it was like, this is the Grammys. <laughs> like, why are you, shouldn't you be out fighting or something? <laughs> like, or do, just doing something to help your people if you guys are really that much at war and I was like I know this is it was kind of ridiculous like he shows up at every single American show and it's just kind of like this what like the, I don't it's not it's not giving you know what I think what I think you think it's giving it kind of doesn't make any sense um anyway so I'm just saying I've seen a lot of people just be so angry, you know, about the violence in Ukraine. Now they're all there. So angry. They're so sad. They're, it's not sad sadness anymore. It's like anger. Oh, how could this happen to us? I can't believe this is happening. Things like that. And it's all this anger, right? And so some people have chosen to like turn that anger. So it's like this feeling inside that they're feeling and they're, they're using their words now. So maybe they're first, they started like tweeting and now they're making YouTube videos and signs and marches and gathering up with other people to talk about it and express these feelings of anger. Now, I think that's a very normal thing to do. Like to anyone who feels allyship with Ukrainians, um, if you feel anger, it's a very normal feeling to feel. Um, but um, I I think that you have to take it a step further and just contextualize your anger. So you have to realize that even if you feel anger about whatever thing, and the thing might be really big and it's going on in the world, not everyone gives a shit. Like, not to be rude or anything, but I don't know. I don't really feel very much about what's happening in Ukraine. I feel like in my lifetime I've seen worse wars that affect people who look like me, right? And all, all I've seen, like I have simply been socialized to understand that most of the people that, you know, I did work with in the past did not give a shit about the violence that was impacting my community. They didn't give a shit about the well-being of me or my family or people who look like me or come from my lineage simply because of the color of my skin. And that was the way it was. And and many people were very explicit in their words where they said, do not bring this conversation into the workplace because I don't want to hear it. And this is not professional. So I think the line in the sand has been very clearly drawn <laughs> in regards to um, people having empathy for other groups outside of their own group, their own tribe. We've talked about tribalism in other videos. Um, and I do think that the only way, the only way to move past that is to open up conversations between people of differing groups and differing opinions. And I mean like differing. So not the people who are already like, oh, I care about all the people in every war. They're the ones with the sticker and the flag. And they're like, 
cheering for you know everyone they're like oh my god stop all that not those people i'm talking about the people who were like when all the black lives matter stuff was happening they were like fuck black lives <laughs> stop bringing this shit on linkedin <laughs> and now the other people who are like I don't give a shit about Ukraine. Just turn the channel when it comes on. If you get those people to kind of talk to each other, I think that's actually where the progress will be made. But unfortunately, the way that the society is societying right now, <laughs> we have just separated everybody. So everybody just has retreated to their group of comfort, the group of other people who feel the way that they feel. And nobody wants to have conversations along those lines. And I think that is what America has become. And um, I don't know, because, uh, yeah, I do see with a lot of the cancel culture. It's just like if your opinion is, is if your opinion differs, you're canceled. Canceled. You're not really canceled. You just, I guess, go to a different. That's another thing, too, because it's like we all live in one society. So it's like not really like you go to a different space. Like, you're like basically still in the same space, but you just like have microaggressions, I guess, toward the other people who you now don't like. And I don't know. I guess I've gotten super comfortable with that because I've been dealing with it my whole life. So I'm like the macro aggressor, micro aggressive, <laughs> a macro micro aggressor. You know, you just give people mean looks when you get kicked off Twitter. You're just like, hmm. Well, now I guess YouTube is the platform where I express myself. And then when this one stops, it'll be another one. <laughs> All the opinions will just keep coming. But um, it's like you just platform jump until, <laughs> until you find a platform where you can kind of say your shit and feel like, okay. <laughs> That's so strange. It's so... Oh, it's, it's, it's very weird. Yeah, no, I, um, I do think there's like some things that I think are kind of weird. Like, uh, if you have certain feelings about particular groups, like we just have to create spaces in the society where you can just have open, com maybe it's Reddit, maybe Reddit that actually exists and, and I'm just like not hip enough to using it in that way, but we just have to have more open platforms where you can actually talk to people who have different points of view about controversial issues and kind of just talk through them and unpack them because what we have right now is just it is not working 